we'll get right back to walking with dinosaurs after this. But now, they were the first backboned animals to fly. Sure, the young Atlantic of the Cretaceous was about 200 miles wide, but it was still quite a long way for a pterosaur to wing it non-stop. How'd they do it? Paleontologist Dave Martill has one theory of flight. Pterosaurs could fly such large distances because despite their vast size, they were very, very lightly constructed and beautifully engineered for flight. Very, very small adjustments on their large wings would take advantage of updrafts from the air, and that's what kept them airborne. From a pterosaur's aerial view, great changes were shaping the land below them. Australia and Antarctica split away from South America, but the South Pole of the Cretaceous was very different from the one we know today. Jim Kirkland reveals why. Because of high levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, there was extreme global warming, making the South Polar regions warm and moist. Into the South Pole's long, dark winters, free from ice thanks to warm currents, comes a unique breed of dinosaur. As walking with dinosaurs continues, 